Hey there folks, Toby here from Mac Pro Video and I'm here to give you a walkthrough of some of the features in e-instrument session horns. Now this is a library for native instruments contact and what it aims to provide is a really versatile pop horn section for your productions. Now as you'll see in a bit, session horns has a few very clever tricks up its sleeve uh, which really help set it apart from other brass libraries. So I've got session horns open here in the performance instrument and what you can see on the interface here is the full section. Now this comprises of four instruments, so from left to right we have first trumpet, tenor sax, trombone and second trumpet. Now using this full section I'm just going to play back a very typical kind of brass line. Now the first clever thing about session horns is that you can actually choose the type of section you want to use. So if you go up to the section setup menu, you can see you can choose various combinations of the section. So I could just choose tenor sax and trombone. Or maybe just the trumpets. And maybe I could just add a tenor sax back into that section. And this is really handy because I can do this all from the interface and I don't have to start loading in loads of different instruments to start building my section. In the performance instrument, there are many ways that you can add different articulations via controllers. The first one of these is the velocity switch, and this allows you to assign a different articulation to the higher note velocity values. And there you can hear I'm getting that sforzando crescendo, when I hit a higher value. Now I could add a rip. And there's plenty of useful articulations to choose from there. Now if we head over to the control page, we'll find even more useful options for adding expression to the brass lines. So first off we have dynamic control, and here we can choose to trigger the different velocity layers via note velocity. And we can also manually crossfade through these velocity layers using expression or CC11. Now there's a number of articulations we can add using the pitch wheel. Now in normal mode the pitch wheel acts like a normal pitch bend. Now if I activate doits and falls on note, when I turn the pitch wheel down a quarter and play a note, I get a long fall. And if I put the pitch wheel all the way down, I get a short fall. And if I put the pitch wheel up, I'll get a doit effect. So this is a really convenient way to get quite a lot of articulations out of one controller. Now we can also get these effects on release of the note. And this will often give you a more natural sound as it has more of a legato feel to it and you're not having to re-trigger the sample to get the effect. So there's plenty of control over articulations here in performance mode. Now if you need more articulations, you can always get these by using the single articulation instrument in conjunction with the performance instrument. And this has all the features of the performance, although you can only use one articulation at a time. Now there's always been one inherent problem when sampling brass sections. And that is if you sample four players in a room, then you play back that sample using two notes, you're effectively doubling the amount of players. Now although this is how session horns works in polyphonic mode, they've thought of a really clever idea to get over this problem. Now this is called Smart Voice Split, and this is one of the best features in Session Horns. Now when I activate this, what it does is, if I play a four note chord, Session Horns effectively splits that chord so each element of the section is only playing one note. And this is exactly how a real horn section would work. It even voices the chord like you would arrange for a brass section, with the trombone on the bottom, followed by the tenor sax, followed by trumpet two, and then trumpet one for the highest note. So here's session horns in polyphonic mode. Now here's session horns in split voice mode. You can hear that the more notes that I add, the more the section is split. Now before, if you wanted to do this, you'd have to find four solo instruments, program or play all those instruments individually, mix them, pan them, whereas here in Session Horns, it's all done for you automatically. 
Now, another cool feature is the octave drop. This actually allows you to transpose some of the instruments in the section down an octave, which will effectively re-voice the chord in a different way. And it also provides a lot of tonal variation when arranging chords, as certain instruments have different qualities in different ranges. Now, the way this works is that drop first drops the trombone, drop second drops the sax, drop third drops the second trumpet, and drop first and second will drop the tenor sax and the trombone. So let's have a listen to a couple of examples of this. Here's the example with no dropping at all. Now we'll drop the trombone down an octave. Now let's drop the second trumpet down an octave. You can hear that each of these different drops adds a different tonal texture to the way the chords sound. And this is very versatile. Now another great mode is legato mode, and this allows you to create flowing lines that join together. And actually drop mode actually works really well with legato as well for creating octave legato lines. This means you can get the sound of classic octave lines with just one note. Legato mode is also great for kind of rapid fire licks as well. So this is great for getting rid of that kind of machine gunning effect where the sample is re-triggered all the time because you have those lovely legato samples. Now the last feature I want to show you here is the animator. Now you can activate this in the voicing assistant menu by choosing Animator, or actually come down to the Animator in the Performance Instrument and turn this on. And you also have the option to assign the Animator to the Sustain pedal so you can kick it in anytime you want. And you'll find this in the Control page. So what is the Animator? Well, basically it's a phrase player, and it comes with a load of predefined phrases in a load of different styles. So if I go to the Genres list here, you can see I've got R&B, Soul, Pop, New Jazz, Funk, Latin and reggae. Now for each genre you get a number of different songs that come with this and you can click on the uh, song list. Now I'm going to choose Jamaican here. Now each song comes with six phrases mapped over C1 to A1. Now I can either change these phrases using the uh, little icon here or I can use the forward and backwards buttons. But even better, these are actually mapped to my keyboard, so I can trigger these on the fly as I go. So if I just play the phrase here that's located on C1, and all these phrases are transposable over the keyboard too. Now you'll notice that each song has this uh, little button that says Link Sound Preset. Now, if we go into the sound panel, we can see we have a number of options for sound. Now, one of these options is the section mix. And this lets you rearrange the kind of emphasis on different instruments, give you uh, different EQ settings. So if I were to choose sax and brass, and you can hear the saxophone has more emphasis in this preset. Now I'm gonna choose one called Trumpets Up 2. And you can hear I'm getting more trumpets in the mix there. And we also have a number of predefined effects chains here. So I could choose a lo-fi dub. But for our example here, I'm going to go back to this short echo. Now we also have a humanized function here where I can detune the section. And you also get controls here for stereo width as well. So you can go from totally mono to really wide. Now we've also got a reverb here. And there's a wide selection of presets for the reverb too. Now all these effects are available to you whichever mode you're in. So there's loads of scope for tweaking your section sounds. So let's check out some of these phrases in context.
Now, there are a number of different ways to personalise these phrases as well. Now, one of these is rhythm only. Now, if I turn this on, what's going to happen is, instead of playing the notes from the phrase, I can now input my own notes on the keyboard. So that's me playing one note. There's a C major chord. F major. So you can see it's really easy to change these phrases around. Now another cool thing is I can actually map this to a MIDI CC controller and turn this off and on as I choose. So now I'll play the same piece of music, except on the second half I'll kick in the rhythm only and play a chord of my own. Now, the one thing you'll notice is that the rhythm only feature re triggers the phrase every time you hit a note. Now, to stop this happening, we can use the one shot feature, and this allows us to change notes throughout the phrase without the phrase re triggering. So just these two features make the animator really versatile. Now I can even map the one shot to a MIDI controller as well. So now I'll use the rhythm only and the one shot in the same piece of music and in the second half I can put my own chords in to that rhythm. Now the last feature I'll show you here are the tempo buttons and I can choose to play these phrases back at half speed or double the speed. So if I change this to double speed I could easily change this reggae thing into more of a ska track. So you can see that Session Horns has some great features and there's plenty to keep you busy here. So that's about it from me for this walkthrough. My name's Toby, I'll see you later.